Right, good morning. Right, today we're going to see a very different Tim Jeans. Um, today I'm going to be looking at uh, chopping up a bit of firewood as our winter stocks are actually starting to run a little bit low. Uh, now in the shed I did chop up um, some logs which I used the chainsaw um, but that was just prior to the winter. But now as my stocks are going down, um, I need to now uh, chop those big uh, logs up uh, that I use the chainsaw with, uh, with the axe into sizable firewood pieces, as we can see in the shed. As you can see over here, we do have um, our nice firewood pieces that are chopped up prior to the winter. Um, but now these stocks are obviously starting to run a little bit low and may not see me through the rest of the, um, the winter. Okay, first I'm just going to be getting my axes ready. Now I'm just going to show you the different axes that I have got. Okay. Firstly, this little hatchet, this is no good for chopping up firewood. Um, it's literally, it's great um, if, if you're just breaking up a little bit of and chopping up some kindling. Well, we're not going to be using that one today. Uh, the next axe, which I really enjoy, um, is this one here. Um, but the only problem with this, I do find... Uh, is that it is a little bit lightweight um, and personally I like a little bit of weight um, in, in my axe it just makes the chopping of firewood a lot, a lot easier and of course my all-time favorite <laughs> is the maul uh, as one can see it's got a nice big chunky piece at the back which serves as a wonderful hammer as well so I'm going to be using my mold here today, but I'm just going to just check it um, because it just may need a little bit of, of sharpening because it has seen a little bit of wear prior to the, the winter period. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm, because I don't have a proper uh, stone for this, I'm just going to use uh, a file uh, just to take a couple of the burrs um, off the end of the mall. File is not the best thing to to use, um, but it does help remove the burrs off off the end. The advantage of a file is that it doesn't generate or heat up the metal, uh, so the temper of blade is not affected. Yeah, that's actually feeling good. Could just take that other side down a little bit, a little bit more even. That's razor shop. Excellent. That should actually do the the job perfectly for today. But before I go outside and start chopping up some logs, um, I want to just make mention that of the timber that I have um, felled and cut up with the chainsaw, it is in most cases Douglas fir. I do have some ash as well. Um, which is a great nice hardwood um, but I do find that with the Douglas fir you get a lot of knots 
in the in the wood. Let me see if I can try and find a piece and I'll show you. Now I don't, I don't profess to, to know my wood or my timber or my trees. Uh, I think I'm a typical uh, city boy that moved out into the countryside. So to be honest, I don't and can't really tell one timber from the other. So I guess I am a little bit stupid there. But um, the problem is once you start hitting this with an axe to actually split it up to make your firewood, the problem is you get these knots in it. Let me bring a bit closer in there. You can see these knots over here. Now that becomes a hell of a bloody problem to actually try and split that. When we turn it over to the other side, you will actually see over here. And this is basically because a branch came out of the side of the, um, of the tree. And the problem is when you hit in here with an axe, it is impossible to actually split it. Now, because of the problems that I have had before, and due to the frustration, the level of frustrations that I've had, that I found that even with the weight of the maul, to split it and, and get a clean break without the knots literally holding the pieces of firewood together because that is my biggest problem. There may be some of you guys out there that are professional uh, firewood cutters or choppers. Um, you can leave a comment below and literally give me a little bit of advice um, because I am very much open to advice and learning and that's what it's all about. Now, what I have been forced to do, and you will actually see shortly, once we start chopping, and I have difficulty with some of these logs, I went and got one of these big steel uh, wedges. Um, it's not as long as I would like. I would have liked a much longer one, but it's, it's a nice size wedge. And then what I would do is I would put the wedge in, and then I'd hit it either with the back of the ball, but of course, to make things a little bit easier, I used my favorite 14 pound hammer and then knock the shit out of it. Drive the wedge in, which will force the, the, um, the log to then split. It does take a bit of effort, um, and of course, if you're not fit, trust me, it takes it out of you. You start sweating like a pig. Um, because of possibly my age or my level of fitness, um, <laughs> I seriously battle. All right, we'll go outside and we will look at my attempt of chopping up some further firewood for the rest of the winter. Okay, this is my little pile for today, uh, just to top up my stocks, just that little.
Have you got some nice sizable pieces? Now this piece over here, it's got a couple of big knots in it, but we'll try and split it um, just between the two knots. Hey, 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 with the sun of my eyes. Well, guys, as you can see, this is one of the most beautiful Irish winter mornings. So we need to make what they call hay whilst the sun shines. In my case, it's firewood. So here we are, going to be doing just that. Every couple of days when the weather eases up a little bit, I pull out a few extra logs. Um, and just chop them up uh, just to keep my firewood stock topped up uh, that'll keep us going for and throughout the the winter so let us get back to chopping firewood shall we <laughs> now this is the one I spoke and I showed you about showed you earlier about these two knots over here and this other one on the other side oh, let's just have a look and see see what happens when we strike it with the maul 
Yeah, as I thought, even with the mall and that, that wedge over there is not quite doing it. So we'll go back to the old trick. As she's starting, as she's going, and voila. Works every time. See if that will split. And she does. She's okay. She's looking good. She's getting there. Just give her another one. Went for luck. That should do it. Not quite. Now what you can always do here. Sometimes I like to do a bit of a gentle persuasion. Why kill yourself? Ah, once again, the maulers doesn't seem to be working as well as I'd like. So we'll go back to the old, my old time favorite, the wedge. Gentle persuasion with force. That's the only problem, she won't go. Drive her all the way home. And voila. All we've gone and done is taken a quarter out of it. I'm not sure whether the mall will now split that. We could try it, otherwise failing which uh, we'll go back to the wedge. And voila! Talk to me, baby. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Right. Ah, yeah. Let's try that again. <laughs> yeah, I'll try that again. Now it's amazing when there's no knots and she's relatively dry, uh, she goes. Goes so easy when your grain's nice and straight. Becomes like a hot knife through butter, you know? around we'll just go straight for the wedge you can see there's one big knot there another one there there's two there and on this side and running across three others another one there uh, 
it's going to hold this piece together pretty well. What a pleasure. So say the wedge takes no prisoners. Ah, that'll do for the for firewood, for the fire. It'll fit in. All comes down to what size the opening of your stove is for it to go in. We just turn it around, give it a crack from the other side, and it never fails. I don't believe in killing myself. Yes, I know with the wedge, every strike and bit of energy is going in to split it further. No wasted energy, yeah. Right, now we're down to our last piece for the day. Let's see how this one goes. No, it's not making my day. There you go, we've got a nice split there. And
And that's it. There we go. That's another day's job done. <laughs> Bit of added firewood there. Bit of daily exercise. Uh, good for us old buggers. Keep us going. Oh well, that's another job done. But I thought what I'll do is I'll just show you guys a little bit around where where I live. Another bit of pile of wood over there. Have a grazing field alongside us over here. And as we walk to the the front of the house, um, I'm right on Kushlock Bay. The mountains are very hazy today, so you can't actually see them. And of course, right down there is the actual fishing uh, pier where the little boats go out. Uh, we have a big international uh, fishing competition here a couple of times a year. Kushlock Bay runs uh, over into Loch Mask, uh, which is on the other side um, of those trees that you could see on the other side of the water there. It actually, in fact, goes, goes around. Well, that just shows you a little bit more, guys, of a little bit about Tim, um, where I live, and uh, of the area that I, that I live in. So there's a lot more to, to how, who I am than what you guys actually normally um, see on my um, YouTube channel.